Oftentimes, especially when entrepreneurs or product managers create an early business case for a new product or service, the question is not yet, what's the optimal price point for this product? Rather, what's an expected price range for this product? There are simply too many unknowns at the early stage for a product for an exact price to be determined. In such situations, the Van Westendorp Price Sensitivity Meter, PSM, is an appropriate and widely used methodology in pricing research to understand an expected and optimal price range for a new product, especially when there are no real-world references to benchmark against. The Van Westendorp Price Sensitivity Meter is a survey-based approach that aims to determine an optimal and expected price range for a product or service by assessing customers' perceptions of the value of the product's benefits and assessing their willingness to pay for them. The Van Westendorp PSM typically involves four key questions in a survey. First, what is the price point at which the product is considered a good purchase? We'll call it good value. Second, what is the price point at which the customer would still consider the product, but it is getting too expensive? We'll call it getting too high. Third, what is the price point at which the product is considered too inexpensive? That is quality it's being questioned. We'll call it too cheap. And fourth, what is the price point at which the product is so expensive it is no longer considered for purchase? We'll call that unacceptably high. After collecting responses to these four questions, the researcher can plot the cumulative responses on a line chart. Analyzing the results, the Van Westerndorp PSM provides insights into three important price reference points. First, the point of marginal cheapness, or PMC, the point where an equal amount of people consider it too expensive or unacceptably high as too cheap. This is the point where the price is considered too cheap, potentially signaling low quality or inferior value. The point of marginal expensiveness, or PME, this is where an equal proportion of people consider the product good value as too expensive or unacceptably high. The point at which the price is perceived as too high, discouraging potential buyers. The optimal price point, or OPP, where the proportion of people who said unacceptably high equals the proportion who said too cheap. This research technique calls it the optimal price point or OPP. Here the product is seen as offering the best value or represents a reasonable balance between benefits and cost. A word of caution, while the Van Westendorp methodology uses the term optimal price point, it is not to be confused with an optimal price point determined by other, more robust, methodologies such as conjoint analysis. The Van Westendorp method lacks the methodological rigor to determine an actual optimal price point, and it is best used to determine an acceptable price range. In fact, that acceptable price range is from the point of marginal cheapness to the point of marginal expensiveness. One of the issues of the Van Westendorp method is that respondents tend to exaggerate their stated price points and thereby their willingness to purchase at a certain price point. As a means to cope with it, the four questions are often followed by two purchase intent questions as described by Newton Miller Smith in 1993. First, how likely would you be to purchase this product if it were offered at and insert the price point for the good value? And second, how likely would you be to purchase this product if it was offered at, insert the price point for the getting too high here? Definitely would buy, probably would buy it, might or might not buy it, probably would not buy it, and definitely would not buy it. The goal of the Newton Smith purchase intent questions is to cope with the tendency of respondents to exaggerate and to help calibrate the Van Westendorp results toward more reasonable figures. So here's how that works. Let's assume that we're testing a new product and you're the survey taker. $50 was your too cheap price point and $150 was your unacceptably high price. We assume that your probability of purchasing the product at these prices is 0%. Yes, we assume that even when the price is too low, 
You would not buy it fearing that it's poor quality. Your good value price was $75. So when asked how likely would you be to purchase this product if it was offered at $75, suppose you say 75% probability. Your getting to high price was $125. And you said that at $125, there's a 20% probability of buying the product. We can go ahead and plot a probability chart with these figures, and here's what it would look like for you. We can average these probabilities at each price point across all respondents, which would create a curve that looks something like this. We can clearly see the price point at which the purchase intent is the highest. We can also observe pricing thresholds at which the purchase intent drops more rapidly. In fact, we can combine the prices with potential demand and create a revenue index chart to understand, using the prior information, where revenue seems to peak. So what are the issues with using this methodology and when is it appropriate? Well, the Van Westendorp price sensitivity meter has been a widely used methodology in pricing research. It has received criticism about its limitations compared to other pricing research methodologies, such as conjoint analysis. First and foremost, the Van Westendor PSM is often criticized for its simplicity and lack of robust statistical analysis. It relies on a basic set of survey questions and does not incorporate sophisticated modeling techniques commonly used in other methodologies like conjoint analysis. Second, the Van Westendorp PSM primarily focuses on capturing respondents' perceptions of price thresholds, such as too cheap or too expensive. While it provides insights into price ranges, it lacks detailed information about the shape and magnitude of price sensitivity curves or the specific trade-offs consumers are willing to make. In other words, only a few price points are really measured. Third, Unlike other methodologies such as conjoint analysis, the Van Westland or PSM does not directly estimate an optimal pricing point or provide insights into price optimization strategies. Its designation of optimal price point can be deceiving. An optimal price point depends on several factors such as competitive pricing or brand strategy. The Van Westendorp approach ignores the competitive context, which is often cited as its biggest weakness. Fourth, the Van Westendorp PSM is primarily focused on price range and sensitivity and does not explicitly consider other product or service attributes. It may overlook the importance of attribute level trade-offs and the impact of attribute preferences on pricing decisions. This limitation can hinder a comprehensive understanding of customers' preferences and willingness to pay. It's important to note that while the Van Westendorp PSM has its limitations, it can still provide valuable insights in certain pricing research contexts. It is especially useful when investigating completely new products that have no current substitutes or references to compare against. It is especially useful for understanding acceptable price ranges. However, for more nuanced and precise pricing analysis, other methodologies such as conjoint analysis are highly recommended.